Uh, I was just going to warn, I have had my customary one glass of water, like, while, while I was waiting. Oh, no. And in typical... Yeah, my physiology is rejecting it. It feels like I've been stung on the tongue by a whole hive of bees. <laughs> my tongue is rapidly inflating. So if at any point you just hear wet choking sounds, that's me desperately trying to get words around my uh, slug-like tongue. Okay, um, well, we'll see what we can do. Um, if the internet issues don't get us tonight, then your wet sluggish tongue will. Um, I, had, uh, I, I, I had a few... Ra- you sound like all of my dates. <laughs> <laughs> I had a few revels for the first time in a long time, just just before uh, we started the show, and my mouth suddenly feels Ooh. like as dry as a bone. So I, I don't know when, when was the last time you had revels. They're they're very Moorish. They're very delicious. I forgot how oh, nice they are. Yeah, I think I, th- they're some of my favourites. They're just always overpriced, and there's never enough coffee in them or enough bone powder ones, which I suspect you've managed to find with uh, <clears throat> reckless about bone them. powder. One? Which ones are the bone powder ones? They're the really dry ones. They're all really dry. <laughs> they're like super dry. They're, they're like bone meal. Uh, they were going to get rid of toffee for them, but they they just didn't stick around. Remember when they they were going to like oust one of them? Yeah. I don't know if they were going to replace it with something, but at one point they were going to get rid of one of the revels, and everyone was saying, "Oh, I hope it's coffee." And it's like, no, you can't get coffee flavored things anywhere else. You can't get coffee chocolates. Don't get rid of them in revels. Toffee is everywhere get rid of the toffee ones they're no one's favorite it, it was it was uh, coffee they were going to get r- rid of coffee and uh, mm. th- there was a back which you know i can i can understand because back in the day as a kid i think you just despise the coffee flavored ones i think it's only when you get a bit older and your your palate develops a bit more now, now coffee is one of my favorite ones which paradoxically i despise coffee so <laughs> if but that one out, i don't know <laughs> that's revel's way of it, it reminds you when you grow up there are no sweet things in life and we enjoyed the bitter hollow things that yeah. make us just question our existence we can't have nice <laughs> sweet things <laughs> coffee chocolates for you <laughs> welcome to the adult world bucko <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think you're right there yeah um Oh, you're expected to like start having dark chocolate or something like that. It's uh, you Ugh, know, you're Lord not no. if you if you if you're an adult and you turn up at the counter with a pack of uh, Cadbury's buttons, they they frown at you. Or a Fred. <laughs> that is literally what we our, our family always turn up to the cinema with a couple of bags of chocolate buttons. Uh, it doesn't <laughs> hold us back. That's sort of our treat for whenever we go to the cinema as a family. Everyone's talking about which you, are now diminishing. Everyone's talking about you <laughs> behind your back, and you you've never even noticed before. Oh, I don't care. I'd rather have them questioning my taste in snacks and, you know, my childlike enthusiasm for all things than, you know, me being a, a cynical asshole who does nothing <laughs> but just besmirch, belittle and criticise the movies he's dragged to. Just screaming at people with a, with a mouth full of half-digested chocolate just spitting everywhere. Exactly, yeah. It's like that scene from Come to Daddy in the alleyway. Or is it window liquor? <laughs> No, it's come to daddy. I'm not aware of that reference, so that's that's just an amazing oh, collection of words. It, it was from. Uh, do you remember Chris Cunningham? He was like the sort of weird CGI guy from about 20 years ago. He did the original PlayStation 2 adverts with the Alien Girl. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He did all. He did a couple of the Aphex Twins videos that were like the weird, creepy music videos of the day. Mm. And one of them, I think, it's come to daddy. Uh, there's like an old woman in an, an alleyway and a thing that looks like the regenerator from Res Evil 4 sort of just like crawls up in her face and starts screaming at her. <laughs> <laughs> I'd expect it's great. You'll that. know it if you saw it. The moment you see a screenshot, you go, yes, Apex Twins, of course. <laughs> uh, did they do all the <laughs> Matrix Reloaded stuff? Is that, am I thinking of the same? Did they do like uh, songs for that? Um, I'm not too sure. Let me have a look. I, have a... I don't think so. Or I may be mistaking them just for the twins in Matrix Reload because uh, don't they look yeah, very I think, similar? Yeah, I think you're mistaking them with the twins. I know you bloody love the yes. twins and you're always going on about the twins. Oh, but always. There are... Yeah. Uh, Speaking of Res Evil 4, we are, well, we've got so many things to talk about tonight. Um, I've just done a double bill of uh, Resident Evil related things. One of them is the Netflix trailer for their... Is it July? They've got a new show coming oh, out. Oh God, yeah. 
which I, I completely forgot about because Welcome to Raccoon City happened back in October, mm. and I completely forgot that there was another Resident Evil thing. Um, the, the the trailer's awful. It's mm. not worth watching. It's uh, it's just everything we expect. But off the back of that, and off your um, your hyper bounciness from the other day, I decided, you know what, I'll watch the Resident Evil 4 HD trailer that's coming out in uh, in March and just scope it out because, you know, I'm, I've am i got my finger on the pulse of society. Usually I've got to sort of like detach my talons from it and, and watch it bleed out, but, you know, I, I can feel the pulse of general things. Um, so I, I watched the trailer and it's very much in the style of the recent remakes of 2 and Nemesis. I'll give it that um it does look like it's going to be a good atmospheric horror game mm-hmm. following on in the the style of the last two remakes mm-hmm. um i i don't want to be that guy dan but i'm gonna be um, you're always that <laughs> reading guy through the comments because <laughs> i am always that guy but i try and do it with a smile um <laughs> so i'm reading through the comments and almost every eighth comment is Resident Evil 4 is a masterpiece. I can't wait to play the remake. And it's like, but it's it's a masterpiece. You you can't do better, surely. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you excited to play a derivative? Um uh, no one seemed to be mentioning it. A lot of people were saying, Oh man, I, I can't wait to play this. It's it's gonna be great. I hope they don't mess it up like they did Nemesis, which Nemesis was a complete botch job. Um but none of them were saying anything about the tone of the game because Resident Evil 4 is is three things it's a horror game it's an action game and it's a very campy fun goofy game that revels in it Mm. and it it manages to find that perfect balance between the three and it looks like it's stripped out just purely going off this one trailer Um, but it does contain what looks like cutscenes in which Leon is very brooding in this case of like this one time, I just hope, I hope I can do the right thing. It's like, that doesn't sound like Leon from Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 Leon is is that's akin to Bruce Campbell in Resident Evil, uh, not Resident <laughs> Evil, uh, Evil Dead 2. You know, he's, he's goofy and fun and he's sarcastic in the face of his enemies and he's always on top even when he's uh, the underdog. And I'm, I don't know, I mean, if, if it's a good game in its own right, which, you know, there's a very high chance it could be, then um, then yeah, it's going to be a very good atmospheric horror game, potentially. But part of the charm and longevity of Resident Evil 4, outside of its just amazing game mechanics, uh, as you were <laughs> pull, you were calling me up the other day, um, when I started playing it again for the first time in years, <clears throat> in, in 2020 during the lockdown, I was grumbling and griping my entire way through it. Uh, particularly when I got to the last, you grumbled a lot on uh, the. It was only sorry, on the, you grumbled a lot on the show as well, so you'll have to publicly uh, recant your testimony, as it were. It, yes, absolutely, yeah, and on the show as well. Um, but over subsequent playthroughs, because I must have played it about five times after finishing it the first time and new game plusing it, and sort of really learning how the game worked, and then looking into the like the making of the game and the rubber banding and and the entire way the game was put together, and it was phenomenal just the, the intellect that's been put into that was put into Resident Evil 4 to make it this perfectly balanced game um it, it really was lightning in a bottle and i don't know i, I just think this is going to be a remake of Resident Evil 4 and that will be about as far as it goes it won't have the the heart or the or the brains that they they put in the the hail mary pass that was the original one so i'm i'm looking forward to playing it from a horror perspective but i really doubt that it's going to have the just the memorable impact that the the original had but um all the same still it'll, it'll be nice to have something to play march next year yeah i i, I think it's all to do with people's expectations and things we've spoken many mm-hmm. times about how both of us um we're trying temper our expectations more and more these days i think if you're <laughs> going into it expecting it to have the same effect on the industry that the original did you're going to be you know sorely mm. um sorely disappointed um i am just intrigued to see um i suppose i mean as you were saying it's difficult really to expand on what they did 
with that gameplay wise i mean the only real mm. adjustments you can think to improve it which kind of undermines what they were trying to do with the original but something Tank like controls? yeah exactly um mm. and um uh, sorry wait what tank controls well yeah the, the way that if you wanted to aim you had to stand so, uh, lock yes. still yeah exactly yeah i was yeah yeah <laughs> sorry tank controls are more uh, associated with uh, the first couple the original of original yeah the originals mm. um but yes the idea of you can only shoot when you're standing still and stuff and that was implemented specifically because that made the game harder um mm. it's, it's very easy to walk and shoot and then you kill everything off really easily and and it's not a big deal hello Resident Evil 5 yeah so that was all part of the horror aspect um that they wanted to to put in there and it just so happened that it just got incredibly infuriating it's like run why can't you do two things at once <laughs> why can't you do two things you stupid stupid man <laughs> um so I, I imagine that's what everyone will be clamoring for and it'll be interesting to see if they give us that i mean one of the uh, did you ever play the the wii edition of Resident Evil 4? When uh, no, I Unique? kept forgetting that it came out on the Wii. Uh, I remember it came out on the GameCube because that was the launch for it, wasn't yeah. it? But, um, I, well, I, I must have watched you playing it, I, I think. You definitely did. Um, yeah. I, I just assumed that I'd have handed it over to you and said, here, have a play at some point. So I didn't know if you could remember. Uh, no, you would have remembered me having a, a tantrum about, oh, this game is stupid because I can't play it. Yeah, I can remember all those tantrums. On the Xbox, but not the Wii. <laughs> um, Super Mon- you I knew a- my limits. Did you have a Super Monkey Ball freak out? Mm, can't remember um, one if you did. N- no more so than would have been expected of Super Monkey Ball. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think that's the best. I think it was more just like, ah, frustration, rather than, you know, my childish tantrums that uh, yeah. not how to play Star Wars Lego. <laughs> 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 They're too hard. They should be in accessibility mode. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, so the Wii version is exceptional and it kind of negates the stop and shoot mechanic mm. because you're literally aiming on the screen. So it becomes more of a light gun game and it just makes it a lot easier, really. And, uh, and, and, and less frustrating for that reason, because you're not just constantly fiddling with stopping and using your thumbstick to, you know, mm. aim. Wherever Precision. It's... Yeah. Did you have the, um... The chainsaw, or was that someone else I'm thinking of? Yeah, I've, I've got it. Yeah, chainsaw controller. Yeah. yeah it's all, all sealed from all those years ago. Um, hmm. Last I looked, it's going for 350 on eBay. So um, I'll take it. <laughs> I, I'm very much considering when uh, when the game's released in a year's time. I, I like to think that that price will be doubled. So um, <laughs> A whole seven pounds. <laughs> my, my, shoot for the stars, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, we even have chainsaws by the distant year of 2023. <laughs> well, actually, I say 350, and that's just for a regular one. That's not even sealed. I'm yet to see another sealed um, copy of the chainsaw. Mm-hmm. So, well, there you go. You can name your price. Yeah, hopefully. Um, Get the voice actor of Leon to sign it, and you could be looking at anywhere up to 13 pounds 50. That's an idea, isn't it? He, he does actually do conventions and things. Although I'd be terrified to take it anywhere because, um, uh, yeah. It's just it's it's pristine. It is literally pristine. Mm. I've waited for this <laughs> for this moment for near twenty years at this point, um, <laughs> which is terrifying to think of. Wouldn't it be a shame if? Uh, well, it'd be hilarious. The, the voice actor for Leon, classic Leon, he doesn't even get allowed into conventions because there's a habit of he'll go and audition for a role such as Leon Kennedy in Resident Evil five the movie retribution and they said nah you don't sound like chris uh, <laughs> you sound like leon so they kicked him out and um and then he applied for the voice actor work for the new game and they said nah you don't sound like leon and they stopped him so now he turns up at conventions to to be himself it's like nah no nah, you don't sound enough like leon <laughs> we'll get the new guy to do you well um it'd be interesting because i think he's um, become far more successful since doing that he's um do you know Critical Role? The dun- the the um... I do. Yeah, yeah. He's... I know he was involved with it. He he's the dungeon master in uh, in Critical oh, Role. Oh wow! Yeah. So I, I've I, never I... watched an episode. It's just one of those things I know is a good thing in the world. <laughs> so I didn't yeah. want to spoil it. <laughs> it's got um, it's got a lot of um voice actors. You know um, who's he got? It's got Ashley Johnson, Last of Us. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got Actually. Laura Bailey. It's got um, Laura Bailey's Nolan husband. North. No, Nolan North isn't in it. Uh, uh, no Troy Baker. 
Um, Forrest but, Whitaker. <laughs> Forrest Whitaker. It's got Denzel Washington. It's got um, <laughs> Richard Pryor, even though he's dead. Just a, a whole host of Gene black Wilder. actors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the blackest of the white actors. <laughs> so, uh, back to the point. I'm not actually sure why they got rid of uh, Matthew Mercer, because he's he's very much on an upswing. And for a lot of people, myself included, he is the definitive Leon. Um, oh, absolutely. He was yeah. voicing Leon up until uh, Resident Evil the, Vendetta. The remake. Um, he, did he play Leon in Resident Evil 2? No, they, they brought someone else in, and he's going to yeah, be reprising the role in Resi 4. <clears throat> or I should say, he has reprised his role for, yes. for the Resi 4 HD remake, the second HD remake, because this is the second HD remake of Resi Evil 4, only this one's more HD for new standards. <laughs> I wish that was a thing. <laughs> In all new HD error. <laughs> In fact, isn't this like the third re-release of it? Because we had the HD re-release a couple of years ago, then we had the VR one, and now we've got this one. Of four? Yeah. No, there are there are like a dozen a dozen editions, um, including uh, like so it started out on the GameCube, then you got the PS2, mm-hmm. then you got the re-release. Uh, you got it on the PS3, um, you got it on the Xbox. Oh, and the PC as well. Yep, you got it on the PC, which was apparently terrible when it was released. Um, yeah. You got all all the Xbox editions. You got the PS4 edition. Um, you've got the uh, mobile edition. You've got oh, God. the uh, yes. How the hell do you play that game on mobile? I don't know, but it, there is a mobile edition. Um, you got the VR edition. Um, th- yeah, no lie to say that there must be a dozen versions of that game in its various iterations. And it's only at this time they've gone. You know what? The story could be better, so we're going to tackle <laughs> it from that direction. That takes a special kind of narcissism. Well, I mean, Capcom are on the way up, so of all the companies that you'd uh, think, yeah, sure, go for it. It's that they are they are one of them. Well, that's true. Uh, I can't think of anyone else that's had quite the rising star of Capcom over the last couple of years. Hmm. No, I mean, um, uh, Square Enix. They're sort of tanking everything they touch at the minute, aside from Final Fantasy. True. Um, and it'll be another what seven years until we see Part Two of Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Very likely. Um, oh, Matthew Mercer was uh, Levi in Attack on Titan, the English dub. Interesting. Yeah. That's something yep. I've got to get around to finishing. I, Ex- I got to the I end of just, season three. Just about to say the same thing. I can't even remember where I got to. It was either the end of season two or season three. I just remember being bored I was, and thinking... Oh, that'd be the end of season two. Season two oh, was a waste it? of time. It was incredible. All we'll... Uh, all season two did was spin its wheels it stretched mm. four episodes worth of content over 13 which we should be used to you know having watched shows like bleach um mm. but uh, season three gets things back on track <clears throat> particularly in the second half and we are actually getting revelations now and it ends on a sort of um oh interesting you've blown the barn doors off i am um, i'm interested to see where it's going to go but at the same time I'm sort of like, ah, that that takes a lot of the interest and intrigue out of the world. It's, yeah. I didn't expect it, and it, it's not a kind of like, haha, subversion. It's more like, oh, that's that's certainly an idea. Okay, <laughs> yep, you can certainly get the story to go in that direction. Fine, it's it's not what I expected. Um, my my only concern is that I heard that the when the manga ended, everybody hated the ending. Yes, that's and what I remember apparently hearing. apparently the anime has pretty much stuck true to the source material, and it's like, ah. I see. Mm. Um, yeah. So that slowed my roll a bit, hearing that. I think I'd like to watch it, but with someone that hasn't seen it. I think I'd need yeah. a reason to go back from the very first season and watch it, um, because I can't really... I remember enough, but I want to, you know, rather than drop into the middle of the story again and be like, meh, I want to be excited leading up to those moments. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. The only problem is that you've got to sit through about a thousand and one errands <laughs> and Arman. Yeah. Which takes up about a third of every season. In fact, I seem to remember every episode of Attack on Titan, and maybe it's just me finally seeing anime for what it is for the most part, but every episode seemed to be one third catch up of what happened previously 
Mm. And then a lot of people talking about the new stuff that had just happened that we'd seen in that most anime of ways. Mm. And then closing on a big dramatic cliffhanger, which would then be what they would spend the first third of the next episode talking about in earnest. And then just repeat, repeat, repeat. And it wasn't as bad in season one, uh, particularly towards the end. Um, but I don't know about you. Well, it's becoming the Attack on Titan episode. Um, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I found the geography of the entire place really confusing. Yes. Because it seemed yeah. that they could go outside the walls and then there were the inner walls of the inner city where like all the, the rich and fancy people lived and then the outer walls. But then they would go out into the fields, which would expand for acres and acres and miles and miles and miles. And then they'd find another mm. wall, and they go, beyond this wall is where the giants are. And it's like, but where did the other giants come from? I thought they were in this field, and that wall was the last hope of humanity. Yeah. And then they'll go beyond that wall, and then it'd be like, we're going to have to be careful now, because we're really close to the other wall on which the other side of the Titans. And it's like, where the fuck are these <laughs> things? This, this map makes no sense. It expands forever in any direction. And at any given moment, they're in Titan territory. And that was one of the main problems of season two. Because one was somewhat confusing in its geography, but you let it pass because it was so exciting and, and fast-paced. Yes. Particularly when the female Titan comes into it and it gets, you know, sort of like, ooh, intrigue. There's always something new. But season two likes to get bogged down and wallow in the characters, which is always a bad idea when you're an anime. <laughs> an action anime. <laughs> and uh, you become very aware of an action mm. anime, especially. Yeah, You become very aware that this is a very confused geography in which the, the walls mean nothing. <laughs> yeah. No, I remember thinking yeah. the exact same thing um, because the first, and the, at the end of the first episode, obviously the walls are attacked by the huge titan mm. uh, spoilers <laughs> for the very first episode spoilers for the front cover yeah. of the dvd of season one <laughs> Literally. available since 2015 yeah, i had that poster in my room for about three years um and um <laughs> and you think oh god yeah that's terrifying all these german-esque villages on the on the edge and they're, they're just so open at, at any point and then and then you're right they kind of talk about how they have to evacuate to the inner sanctums of the I mean, I think I'm re remembering this right. Let, let me know if I'm wrong. I feel as though there's this mad dash to get into the, the more inner sanctums so the walls can save them. But nothing ever really seems to... You, you know, but but then the Titans are still attacking the outside walls. And then, I don't know. I don't know. I'd have mm. to go back and watch it. Like, but like you say, I just remember being confused about the geography of everything and um, it being... Good. Uh, I'm glad it wasn't Restrate. just me. Well, it's it's one of those things of who's going to be the first to say it, because <laughs> I'm I'm sure this makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've been dancing around this topic since 2016. It's about time we finally <laughs> had the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Someone says it on the internet for the first time, and then everyone else says, "Well, oh yeah, no, that that's that's something I thought, but I was too scared to be the uncool one, the uh, the 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 stupid um, sidekick asking the questions." Um, how did we get on to Attack on Time? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Anyway. I honestly can't uh, remember. What were we talking um, about? Uh, Resident Evil? Resident Evil 4. Uh, remakes and Chainsaws? We um, remakes, Chainsaws. Yeah. And, and somehow we ended up um, here. Did you, did you go... So, so you just watched the uh, Resident Evil 4 trailer. You didn't actually go through the state of play um, as a whole. No, no, I, I just did the um, just did the trailer. I figured it was the easiest thing to do. And it was, frankly, the only thing I wanted to watch. Um, I, I don't really want to hear their sales pitch for it because you can't trust a, a showrunner or a game developer's, you know, preamble marketing about the product they plan on selling you for a lick of spit so um well, yeah i stuck purely to the advert and well still um while i've got you i don't know I'll, I'll fill i don't know what with but check out the callisto protocol trailer um i think i, I i'd like to hear your, your opinions on it if you uh, if, if you don't mind watching that now let's have a gander callisto protocol yep you you fill i'll just go on mute for a moment Wonderful. Um, so what am I going to feel about? I don't know. Will I just end up editing this in post? I might do. Um, let's talk about the Games Master, actually. Um, it's something that we do every single 
week we <laughs> we have something on the TVs and the original plan was actually to reference what we had on the TV because I thought it would be cool to have uh, Games Master on the TVs and then kind of pipe up whenever anything interesting comes on and, and talk about it with uh, you know our, our memories perhaps or um, it's reference to general nostalgia which is a lot of what this show is um, and then uh, yeah Matt didn't, Matt didn't <laughs> uh, just kind of ignored it and didn't appear interested in, in doing that so that quickly fell by the wayside which is strange because um, I'm often sat here watching these episodes as we as we're talking uh, amongst ourselves and there are occasions where I think oh that looks really cool I'd like to talk about that knowing that Matt cannot see it he's uh, he's, he's not tuned into it um, which is a shame because um, it's been fascinating to watch, uh, you know, the retroness of it all. In fact, just in, uh, I wasn't paying too much attention, but in the in the last episode to see them uh, discussing the Mortal Kombat movie. So this must be from '95, I imagine. This uh, this this particular episode. Um, it's just a, it's just a strange burst of nostalgia um, to to watch these and. Um, yeah, it, it it would have definitely been cool to um, to reference them more, but uh, I mean, Matt's not got too much of a history in that type of thing, I don't think, and the origins. So it it more or less just be me kind of doing what I'm doing now and just just rambling about things that he has no particular investment with. That's uh, outside Spyro on the PlayStation. No particular investment with. That's the magic word. <laughs> um, yeah, what do you think? Um, I got flavours of Doom 3, I got flavours of Dead Space, I got a hint of Soma, albeit just a very subtle one there. Um, yeah, it, lo- it looks fine. Um, it's from, it is from the... I don't know, it, it, it just feels... Yep, go on. D- sorry, carry on. No, no, I was gonna, who's it, it from? It, it is from the creator of Dead Space. Ah, okay, that would explain a lot about the tone and the um, the gloopiness of it all. Yeah, okay. Grand. Oh, that's good, because I know that um, EA are currently ploughing ahead with their remake of Dead Space with none of the original dev team, so... Um, okay, mm, that, yeah, that's This comes out a month before. At <laughs> oh, good. Hopefully it'll bury them. Um, yeah, okay, well, that's slightly more promising. It, it just... It reminded me of... Basically, every other sort of game of its type from that era of the Xbox 360. I I don't mean that in a disparaging way, but it felt very comfortably throwback in in that regard. Mm. Mm. Um, If if that makes much sense. (laughs) uh, To to be honest, I'm just saying mm, you you cut out completely and I didn't hear a word of it. But I'll I'll, I'll assume that I agreed with you. Figures as much. Um, I can. I feel. I feel yes, as, as you I should. Feel as I can hear a party going on in the background. It, 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 people suddenly burst into uh, our room and pff. and kind of having a a um, what what, what do they call them? A macarena. <laughs> a, a party. A, a, a party. The, the Mamba Number Five. Um, um, yeah, that's that's. Yeah, that's I, I think there's a spider loose or something in the kitchen, and rather than just leaving, they've all decided just to group and faff. Um, group and faff. That's a good term. Yeah. Group and faff. So, uh, yeah, that's probably why the internet's a bit up and down, because it's usually when people are in the kitchen that, uh, for some reason, it's almost like their their collective flesh mass just absorbs internet signal. Yeah, they are so loud. We, uh, we, it's usually quite yeah. quiet on your end of things, but, so this is, I mean, um, you, you, did we mention it on the show, or was this just in the preamble beforehand, that this is your last ever, uh, recording of any kind in your current abode, so that's... Um, oh, quite yes. a special. It can't come soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> how are you feeling? Oh yeah, I mean uh, it's incredible special commemorative event. How we'll miss the crappy internet signal and and the dancing around the constant cutouts. Mm. And um, I, I mean, you've never actually spoken anything about your housemates, and I'd never uh, never request you divulge that information on the internet, of course. Um, but. Um, <laughs> Well, their names and addresses <laughs> and blood types are. <laughs> Do you are you aware how a list of all their fears can be found here on a list of all their home addresses? I feel as though I've spoken about this before on one of the shows, but um, do you know that in Japan, um, when they do their character descriptions and things, that fictional characters, blood type is one of the 
is, is just as important as like date of birth for I know it's odd it's to isn't do it? with um, in Japan they believe that blood type uh, similar to how we look upon astrology blood type tells uh, you about your uh, character and personality that's um, that's the interesting thing about it so if you're you know a b or or, or or an o or whatever they you're, you're apparently you know differently wired which um that's why they do it oh that's mm. interesting how so i i'd be fat i mean if it didn't risk my entire internet collapsing were i to google <laughs> anything um I, i'd be curious to know exactly how one's character could be affected by well it's just the blood I, type. I, I don't it's just uh, it's like an astrology thing it's just i don't think there's a there's a science behind mm. it per se it's just a like an observable thing of uh, oh you you have type A blood yeah blood type A is like a bit hot headed or whatever um, I'll I'll look into it shall I um, it's got more iron in Japan. it you're more prone to magneto jailbreaks blood type fascination yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> let me sorry. see if, oh my god is, is is that just a spider or is like are they watching aliens I'm pretty sure she yeah. has moved in by the sound of it um so here we go the Japanese fascination with blood types. Um, is this going to tell me? Um, <laughs> no, you, you had to be born in Japan to understand it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I've got a, an article that's pretty much what I just told you. Um, uh, blood type personality. Ha, ah, here we go. Blood type personality. What does your blood type say about you? Uh, 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 uh. When was the first time you learned about blood types? Because for me, it was the episode of The Simpsons where we found out that uh, uh, Mr. Burns has hypoglycemia mm. and Smithers' blood won't do because he needs type uh, O negative, I think it is, which only Bart has in all of the town. You know what? I honestly couldn't tell you. I... Because um, I remember it kind of being a thing... Because I, I have type O, which I think is the rarest, and I remember my mum kind of Ooh. making a big, big deal about that, um, kind of saying, "Did she put you on a shelf?" <laughs> <laughs> Just extracting vials and vials of blood and saying, "No one's going to get this." Um, <laughs> put it in the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Putting it on eBay, rare, <laughs> rare and valuable. <laughs> <laughs> Triple S class plus. <laughs> um, yeah, and so I think it was generally to do <laughs> bucket sold separately. <laughs> just being sent wet envelopes through the mail. <laughs> <laughs> yep, just dip it in, or just write the envelope, uh, just address it in the blood. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, what's that a um, what's that a plot point for? That I'm going to spoil the ending of the film. Is that oh, it it. Oh, it's, the it's, film. It's the, um, it's the, um, I was going to say, it's Sideshow Bob writing all of his letters to Bart in no, correspondence no, no. in his I'm own blood. Use a pen, Bob. Um, some, I'm, I'm completely spoiling a film, but I can't remember which film it is, so uh, you just have to like not pay too much attention. No, um, it, it's it's a really good idea. Um, like, So someone who's just been murdered or something sell, sends a letter to the police and they're saying, you know, the, uh, it's uh, the valuables or something, something, something. And then at the end of the film, they realize that the valuables are the stamps that he's sent. And the, the uh. stamps are like the fortune that are worth uh, thousands of millions of dollars or whatever. It's, it's a very clever twist. Um, blood types. Good thing you don't know the name of it because you've technically spoiled nothing. <laughs> it could be the end of Attack on Titan season four, for it all could, we know. If you don't know what movie it is, then you know it's not a rip-off if you decide to turn that into your own film. Uh, type A bloods <laughs> are considered to be highly organised, particular, precise, pay attention to detail, perfectionists. They like things done a certain way, which can be perceived as annoying by mm -hmm. others. Uh, what are you, by the way? Uh, you know, I honestly don't know. Whenever I need blood, I just go into the bucket and just <laughs> take a fresh vial. I just murder the dogs. Keeps me regular. <laughs> that, that, uh, that hound the alley. Um. <laughs> to be honest, it, knowing my blood type would probably explain why water causes me to have adverse reactions. So it's probably something worth looking into that. <laughs> um, well, yeah, that's essentially uh, what, it, uh, what it corresponds to. I mean... 
Um, it, uh, just to show you how ridiculous they are. Um, I am a type O, and it says type O's are anything goes, personable, get along with everybody types. So you know he's bollocks. Um, that's that's crap. <laughs> it is. <laughs> the, the <laughs> I've never known you to get on with anybody. That's why we get on so well. <laughs> um, who would have thought that astrology would uh, actually have a better um, kind of ex- explanation of who we are than blood types? So there we go. Yeah, that was a fun little deep dive, wasn't it? <laughs> it is. And um, oh, there's even a, a c- compatibility thing here. So uh, type A is. Well, that's surely only type A's can go with type A's, and type A being positive can go with most others, isn't it? That's like you've universal. literally nailed it. Type A is most compatible with other type A's and AB. B is most compatible with other B's and AB. <laughs> o is most compatible with other O's and AB. <laughs> wow, these AB's sound really cool. Um, that's why O is so rare. They've been like oh, bred no, out of existence. Apparently, I've got it wrong. It says AB is the rarest blood type. Huh? Interesting. ABs are often considered to have dual personalities, the precise and particular qualities of the A group, along with the the free-spiritedness of the B group. Huh. That's news to me. Well, there you go. Do you want to learn something about snails? Uh, Is it going to mortify me? Yes. Mm. With interest. Mm. Um, Go on, then. Okay, so... Uh, the the lean of a snail shell, because it doesn't sit perfectly on its back, it leans either to the left-hand side or the right-hand oh. side. That side denotes which side of the snail's body its genitals oh. are. So when they sort of do their snail thing and they're face-to-face and they slide up against each other, the genitalia are in compatible places. So for two right-hand snails, bonsai, brilliant, you've got yourself a match. The problem oh. is that if you've got a left-handed snail and a right-handed snail their genitalia are in the same position so mm. it, uh, between the sexes. So it, it doesn't match, which is why there are so few left-handed snails, because there are fewer left-handed snails to breed with to pass on the genotype to create more uh, voluminous, uh, voluminous uh, quantities of left-shelled snails, which means that uh, it, you know, they're more sort of disparate and hard to come by, which whittles the number down even more. Like, uh, How cool like gingers, that? how fascinating. Um, yeah, although mostly the gingers are being blackwashed out of existence, so it's a sort of different thing. Oh, chalk one up to the latest one. Uh, Casey Kelly, Kerry, Ke- Kelly uh, from uh, the new Gotham Knights show. Ah. Uh, we've, we've lost another ginger to, uh, to the blackwashing. Oh. That's a shame. What do we do in these? You- it is. I mean, it, it's fascinating. It's it's you know, anyone that's sort of interested in these things. Uh, a lot of ginger characters, um, and gingers are the like smallest um, genetic makeup on earth. There are fewer gingers than like any other demographic. They are the minority of minorities, and a lot of ginger characters in fiction that are being adapted into TV shows and movies are being replaced with black actors and black actresses. And one or two you think is coincidental, but you look at the list and it grows. I mean, the, the latest two are uh, Cassie Kelly from Gotham Knights, uh, from The Dark Knight, Rise, uh, the Dark Knight Returns, and uh, Black Tornado from Black Adam. She's a ginger character, but... Because, and I swear this is why they did it, because her name is Black Tornado, she is now black mm. in the upcoming Black Adam movie. Um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Well, interesting and also shocking and uh, insulting when, when you look at it. But um, yeah, check it out, people. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Um... An entire race of people just being completely removed from television screens despite the fact that they're the least represented and the smallest of all the minorities on the planets multiple planets not just ours mm. yeah it is um I, w- I was just trying to think in my head um who who are the other ones i mean uh, april o'neill was i remember that being a, a big one but uh they've uh, yeah mj mj of course yeah, MJ, yeah um uh, all of the uh, the Aliel from uh, Wheel of Time, which 
uh, a current Amazon show, which is interesting because in the books, basically uh, they're uh, nomadic desert people, but they're all eight foot tall, ginger, sort of bronze skin from being in the sun. But the, the fact that they're, you know, ginger Caucasian origin people in the middle of the desert sort of it's an indication that there's there's something not quite right like there, there's a history there that needs delving into like what why are these people here because they're obviously a mismatch with their environment what's going on uh and uh, in the show ah, oh, they've just replaced them with black people because it makes more sense never mind the fact that it's sort of integral to the world building of wheel of time that there's a bunch of ginger people in the desert tying into the overall mystery and the backstory that fully gets explained in book four but the showrunner doesn't care because it makes more sense for for them not to be ginger uh, and also uh, we need to eradicate the gingers it seems <laughs> and, and and one arguably one of the most famous of course uh, ariel is uh, has been uh, pushed to one side of course in the, in the latest Disney yep. reworking of the little she's Moon. next mm. um wally west from the flash and um oh god whatever it his sister's Iris, Iris West. She's uh, she's black in Velma? both the Flash TV mm-hmm. series and the uh, Velma. Yep, she. Oh no, I'd say she's more brunette, perhaps. Daphne hasn't been touched yet. I thought Velma was um, shifted for an Indian woman in something that was. Something she has, but I always thought Velma was more of a brunette. Oh, sorry. Maybe that's, leaning that's, towards. Oh no, Daphne's no. Daphne's no sorry, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of Je- Daphne. No, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, just because she wears glasses, I think of her as a freak. So, um, and she's kind of short and tall. <laughs> <laughs> she, she does have I, all the hallmarks of a ginger, and it's it's comments like this that is allowing for the eradication <laughs> of an entire species. <laughs> uh, short, tubby, wears glasses. She Maybe it be would be better if we just genocide them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just uh, just because I'm going to throw it in there, if you want uh, a bit of. <clears throat> Because you reminded me when you were talking about snails. For I, I don't know why. Um, but um, Part-Time Explorer is a fantastic YouTube channel. And um, I stumbled across a video on there. Uh, I, I'd never heard of it before. It's called The Terrible Disaster of the SS Arctic, 1854. It's, it's, it's a real-life uh, story of uh, a sinking of a uh, uh, um, an Atlanta... What do they call them? A... Um, a the ships that go around uh, across, Arctic no, cruise line? across the Atlantic. Uh, what do they call them? It's just a, um, a, a, a cross sea, cross ocean, ocean. Cr- I don't know. Um, anyway, it, it, it ran that to uh, that route in the 1850s, and I, I won't spoil it. If you like horrifying, real life uh, documentaries on just the most awful thing you can imagine, uh, go and watch that. It, it's it's yes. about 35 minutes. Just horrendous perfect could you send me the link to that because i i really find stuff on board ships creepy i've i've barely seen a property that makes use Mm. of it you know but um yeah there's something about maybe it's just the isolation of it and the like the creak of you know metal or wood at sea just alone in the ocean but um yeah i find haunted ships and ship related shenanigans like fertile ground for my mind horror so uh, yeah, any, anything that I can indulge it's, in that, um, regard, yeah. Brilliant. There, there are so many great YouTube channels that um, that focus their energies on essentially ship sinking, <laughs> which is which is an interest of mine as well <laughs> for, for similar reasons that you mentioned. Although it's just kind of the human tragedy of it. I mean, I, I I love sailing. I love being out on ships and at sea and stuff. There's a real romanticism about it. Mm. But I'm also simultaneously terrified of. Um, fascinated by the well yeah ter- yeah um um capsizing more specifically i it used to be a, a recurring dream of mine to be on a ship that capsizes and i don't know why why it's this weird diametrically opposed thing in my head that i just love being out on the sea but i'm just terrified about being stranded in the sea or even worse you know being in the bowels of a ship as it capsizes and then just the water flooding in um mm. so anyway the part-time explorer is does a great job of covering um ocean that well disasters at sea essentially and you've got all these stories you know they all spring from the titanic essentially and 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 then you go through the lusitania and uh britannic and, and loads of other ships and things but but this one especially yeah I'll, I'll send you the link it is a 
it, it's not a horror. Marvelous. It's not a horror story in the traditional sense of, of ghosts and things. But it, if you were to turn this story into a film, it'd oh my god, it'd make people just wretch in the cinema at just the horrors that went on. Is it the Donner Party of the Sea? I don't understand that reference. What's that reference? You know the Donner Party? Uh, they were crossing the Great American Trail and they got trapped in the mountains and resorted to cannibalism. Oh, sorry. Um, yes, I, I, I'm aware of what you mean now. It's, it doesn't get to, to, to cannibalism, but, you know, it's not far off. Oh, that sounds even it's, worse. It's, it's, it's not far off how horrible If it's it is. worse than cannibalism because I don't even go in that direction, yeah, okay, I'm all in. <laughs> I'm building this up for you too much now. You'll be like, that wasn't nearly as traumatising as I expected it <laughs> to be. I, I was hoping it's, not to be able to sleep for no, weeks. No, no, it's, listen, this is a true-to-life thing that actually happened in the 1850s. In, 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 in the space of a ship sinking in about four hours, just... The things that happen in the four hours just strike me as as bad as things possibly could get. So, um, yeah, I'll send you the link. And anyone out there listening that that wants to um, just be horrified, um, check that out. Why did I bring that up? I'm imagining that they they pray to Jesus (laughs) and and it doesn't work. So they turn to like satanic summonings and and then they end up with demons running rampant around the ship. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it turns into doom <laughs> um I, I won't i won't say anything more i mean when you say shit can go sideways in four hours it's got to be something fairly spectacular oh Unless they had like a load of animals on the boat and it's like we're gonna have to release the bears and then it's like <laughs> oh no the bears have turned on us <laughs> don't worry the arctic waters will soon go oh my god they're adapting <laughs> <laughs> their fur's turning white. They're blending in with the ice. Oh my god! <laughs> they said they'd make good life rafts, but they're just fighting back. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unleash the kraken, our last hope. <laughs> and the snakes. Oh god. Mm. <laughs> anyway, um, good that we have those gorillas that thrive off snake meat. <laughs> <laughs> we really need to do an investigation of who who, who stocked this ship. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. Let's face it. Um, uh, we we tonight's main focus is going to be dark. But, it was. Um, we kind of I, I've got past that, we? one. Yeah. I. I, I t- uh, yeah. To be well, honest, um, I've just in in that way that I can. Uh, Read your mind via well. I mean, I mean, I also read your text, but you don't really. Uh, you're, you're not particularly subtle with how you can uh, you pass things across. Sometimes. Um, what are you talking about? I'm an excellent yeah, poker player. Sure. Uh, I get the feeling that uh, you may not have enjoyed the end of Dark Season Three. Is that uh, is, is my are my hint? Well. Well. I'm I'm going to keep you in suspense for just a few more minutes. Um, okay. Because we are going to talk about Dark. Okay. Um, but when I was up in uh, Sheffield on my jollies the other day... Oh, yeah. So uh, how much are you we having went to, to see a... F- um, that's about it for now. That's well, fine. I should explain later. That's fine. In private. Sure. Um, but, um, yeah, we, uh, we went to see the new... A24 horror film called Men. Are you at all familiar or have you seen any advertising or heard anything about this When movie? you sent the text saying that this is the list of things you wanted to talk about, I thought, oh, Matt's going to go on a feminist diatribe. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I am? The movie Men? <laughs> uh, I don't know anything about it. Tell me. Um, so um, A24 pictures are an interesting one because... They seem to be like the the ones that want to be the the shining. You know, they want to be the new gold mm. standard for good horror movies. Um, recanting off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that they're the ones behind Hereditary, Midsommar, Arr, um, The Lighthouse, and oh, okay. and now Men, yeah, very cool. and a few others. Um, and it's written by the guy that did Ex Machina, 28 Days Later, um, Devs, uh, a lot of other so stuff. So there's quality um, throughout then, Alex really. Greenland yeah. or something. 
Well, he his career's been a bit sort of up and down, up and down, up and down. It's like, mm. um, but uh, yeah, there's there's a bit of a thing about A twenty four pictures, and it's um, that they're sort of getting lost in their own prestige and ah. an art houseness, and um, yeah. So y- you see a film called Men in twenty twenty, um, central character being a woman in a village where. All the men are played by the same actor with different prosthetics and CGI's on them, and you think, oh, okay, I'm pretty sure I know where this is going. Um, but um, my god, this film is so fucking pretentious. It's like watching a student art house film. Um, it it seems to be. It it seems that every every setup doesn't have a payoff and every payoff never had a setup and all the way throughout the movie you can hear the the writer in the background shouting but ask me what it means ask me what it means i'll never (laughs) tell what's your interpretation oh that's how you interpret is it interesting what about other people and it's so smug on what it's failing to say it's a whole lot of nothing. And there's some really good moments in there. There's some really good moments of atmosphere. But it gets to about the halfway point and then it just gives up. Mm. It's it's a very slow burn first, I'd, I'd say, hour, maybe even less. And then the rest of the film is just like a really slow, wet, deflating balloon. Um, it's not particularly scary the moment it sort of gives up. Um clearly is trying to say something but it's not doing it well at all and um the fact that it's being lavished with such praise you know this is the new masterpiece in horror going to be re redefining the genre from here on out and a24 pictures does it once again uh it's it's awful it's so bad and the worst part is that um it's score is is a woman making honking noises, um, <laughs> which uh, is diegetic to the film initially. She's she's walking through a bridge. It's a well set up scene. It made me think a bit of uh, Absentina, a film by Michael Flanagan, who is a talented horror yes, filmmaker, yeah. and everyone should be checking out his work. Um, but she goes under a bridge, and she's just like doing echo, echo, and she sort of makes a song by going ha ha, and then it's like echoing, and then she's like ah. Oh, 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 on top of all of it, and it's that's basically the soundtrack. Oh, 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 oh. Imagine that on repeat, whilst fuck all happens very slowly in a mm. house. Um, it's it's goofy. I've, it's really distractingly goofy. I've got the trailer um, on now. While you talk, it just looks like a some ITV Sunday evening snooze fest really it is it feels a bit like murder she wrote but by a really pretentious i'm going to use the term soy boy feminist (laughs) even though i'm not particularly of the ilk to throw out that term but this film got under my skin so much that it's like yeah you know what fuck it for the first time in my life i'm going to say soy boy Mm. (laughs) it's it's awful it's so bad um the only interesting part about it really from a visual horror standpoint is right at the end where the men keep sort of giving birth to themselves, like getting uh, like bloated and then they, they birth out another man who then gets bloated and births out himself. And it's it's impressive enough, had I not have seen it done better in society in 1992. Uh, so it doesn't even have, or maybe it's even earlier than that. God, when did society come out? Was it 89? Either way, you know, it's been done better from a film 30 years its senior. Um and no, you know what? I, I want to talk about this a bit. Actually, it was going to be a cursory thing, but fuck it, I'm into the weeds of it now. So it's about a woman who is in uh, an emotionally abusive relationship, and she wants a divorce. And the husband is emotionally unstable and says, "If you try and leave me, I will kill myself, and that will be on your conscience." You know, and that's like, oh, that's that's a nasty mm. hook. That's that's an interesting one. I'm intrigued by this. Uh, and it all goes peak tongue, and he ends up dying, and and 
she's sort of in recovery. She flees to the countryside to have a getaway in a country manor house, and it's this small village where the same man is everybody, but they're all different characters, but it's also possibly the spirit of a folklorish demigod. You know, there's elements of, like... Uh, blood on satan's claw and, and english folk horror about it but it doesn't really go anywhere with it um so it's like okay she's got a traumatic past with men uh, her husband in particular who is a, a a black guy uh all the men in the village are white and all the parallels are throughout the film because he sort of falls out a window gets his arm pierced breaks his leg you know it's a very distinct look of the cadaver when you see the, the ex-husband's mm-hmm. body and as the the white guy gets injured throughout the film it's like oh yeah it's it's him they're mimicking the the bones and everything in the breaks and then uh, right at the end of the film when all the the white guys are birthing into each other finally the last one to be birthed is <clears> him <throat> and it's like so why were all the other guys white <laughs> <laughs> and a completely different character. It wasn't even like it was the, uh, the the act playing the husband in white face. No, no, it's a completely different guy. He might as well be like Alan Partridge. In fact, he essentially is. Um, so it's just really bizarre. But if they're trying <laughs> to have this point about like, oh, men or white men, it's like, yeah, but it was a black guy that was causing her problems. <laughs> Why are all the white guys in the village causing an issue? Um it's it's bizarre it's it's a complete flub of a movie that people are going to be fapping themselves over and and gushing because they want to appear like the uh the intellectuals but it's absolute dross it's absolute nonsense um i'm glad i saw it because it's like yay there are new depths that horror films can sink to <laughs> i thought we were done with the prestigiously pretentious art house driven director movies but no they're back in full fashion god bless you a24 pictures i now know to avoid your work in the future well it's a shame because you brought us the lighthouse well to be fair to uh movie critics the only one uh the only um <clears throat> publication slash website i can see that's actually given it a good score is our, our our old friends over at, at, at the AV Club, they gave it a ninety one. <laughs> I fucking knew it. Yeah. I fucking knew it would be the AV Club. <laughs> um, uh, the highest next to the ninety one from AV Club is an eighty from the Hollywood Reporter. Um, mm. uh, 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 the rest of them are pretty crap. It's uh, got a, a six point three on IMDb and a sixty five on Metacritic. So. Um, even even the Guardian oh, don't good. like it. It must be the poster. Yeah, the, the Guardian gave it a sixty. The poster uh, is absolutely covered with plaudits. Empire gave it a sixty. Here's another idea, which is three wow. out of five. But they didn't. Even, I think they gave Avengers a sixty. Here's an uh, a point of like how bad the film is. So um, at at one point she's on the uh, she's on the Skype phone to a friend, and. Uh, she goes, uh, you know, there's there's weird men in the village and they're, they're, they're like stalking my house. And her friend goes, well, you know, if it, if it all goes bad, then you can use that axe over there. And she's like, <laughs> what axe? And then it cuts and it shows an axe leaning against a fireplace. And she doesn't go, where did that come from? Or that wasn't there before. It's just like establishing the axe is there. Mm. And then right at the end of the movie, when her, her broken... Uh, ex-husband is like sliding towards her and slumps in a chair and they start having a conversation. She picks up the axe and then does nothing with it. Mm. And then the movie ends after, like, MAN comes on the screen in huge letters. And <laughs> that's that's how the film ends. Um, and then it cuts back into the film briefly for a pointless little epilogue. And then, uh, and then it ends again in earnest. But um, it reminded me of how Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 1 ended, where it's just, like, so tonally at odds with, with its. Oh, well, not really how it ended, but... The, it's a really bad the movie, The third of Breaking Dawn, you mean? No, no, I mean, literally, when the film ends and then suddenly, like, the credits roll and it's, like, flashing neon orange and okay, black. Okay, all right, sorry. I see. Um, I've just been scrolling through the IMDb page and, um, yeah, uh, what was it gone? Um, <laughs> there, there's male full frontal nudity in this, is there? Yes. Amazing. Another uh, positive to put in this box. <laughs> yeah, the, the tags. <laughs> the, oh, my God. <laughs> so it's got storyline, and this is a young woman goes blah, 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 blah. And then the tags it has is vacation gone wrong, male nudity, 
male fun- full frontal nudity, male giving birth, man giving birth to a baby. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> that is essentially the plot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. ah, yeah, it's, wonderful. Uh, it's so, complete trash. Of, of all the films <laughs> to go and see um, in, on that certain, uh, you know. I know, right? We could have seen Top Gun. <laughs> but my friend didn't want to go see Top Gun, so it's like, all right, we'll watch Men because it will be good for a laugh, if nothing else. And and uh, yeah, <laughs> it was. To be honest, yeah. I, I wish I'd seen Top Gun. I really want to see Top Gun. Um, Everyone's going mad about uh, Top Gun. So I was one of the, the fifth. Yeah. Have you ever seen the original? No. <laughs> Never. <laughs> It's uh, it's mm. the most hilariously homoerotic straight film ever made, um, but uh, yeah, you know it, it's got its charms. It's very of its time. You know, it's very eighties, yeah. um, and unfortunately, if you've seen uh, Hot Shots, then there's no chance whatsoever that you can watch it with a straight face. That's always been the worry. Yeah. But it's a perfectly fine film. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll probably <laughs> get around to it in a double bill one of these days. Uh, now the second one's out because you. Oh, we should do it alongside the uh, Mission Impossible movies. <gasps> Tom, Tom Cruise Cruise-a-thon. season, yes, yeah, I like that. That's a good idea. Um, yeah, cool. Well, that's uh, great. I'm never going to go anywhere near that film. So, uh, man, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it does. Excellent. From from, right. from looking at the IMDb page, it's like so you're trying to do, um, essentially, uh, what was the um. Uh, uh, the uh, b- 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 the this new wave of um, black horror films that have uh, come out from America. Who's it? Jordan Peele. Oh, Jordan Peele like one? Get Out. Yeah, Jordan Peele. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 the guy who said he'd never cast a white guy as his main character, and it's like, how? But that sounds really racist. Looks like they're trying to do an um, English version of that. Yeah. Um, but just added in kind of <laughs> oh, League God. of Gentlemen esque uh, lead male characters. How dare you! Don't you? Dare drag league of but that's but that's that's but that's <laughs> but the vibe yes, they got from it does have that yeah, vibe from, from the faces yeah uh, of of the of the guy with the prosthetics and things you you do just expect him to start bursting into I I I, I tried watching League of Gentlemen it did not gel with me at all um, uh, mm. so I I couldn't possibly <laughs> dare to try and do voices or pretend to know catchphrases and things but um, yes yeah, just got that kind of way about it uh, sorry yeah uh, you you were about to lead off into something please go ahead. Uh, I was about to take us into a journey into the oh, dark. Oh, right. Of course. Yes. I'm, yeah, as, as I say, I, I, I'm interested to see where this goes. I was going to, under different circumstances, I would have had a bit of a spiel to launch into, but I'm I'm more than happy to, to let you um, um, tell me, uh, yeah, what do you, th- well, start by... You sure? I'm happy no, no, for you no, to no, have no, a spiel. No, 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 because that was preempting that, uh, that that you enjoyed it. Now I'm not sure that you did. So uh, tell us um, where you were... Um, at the end of season two, what you were thinking about the series. We did, um, just for people coming into this fresh, we've had two episodes talking about it. I think they were both the Michael Jackson Moonwalker episodes, coincidentally. Um, I think it's uh, Moon... Yeah. I think so, yeah. And then way, way back I think it was the, the, the first Moonwalker episode, and then uh, Bugs and Drugs. I think it's those two. I might be wrong, but I can't be bothered to go back and look. So, um, <laughs> the, so they're the two I'm just going to th- throw out. Um, that's Matt watching it. And then back in the day, uh, on the actual podcast, I spoke about it after the first time I watched it. So that's my initial review. Um, which episode was that? Can you remember? Cause you said you went back. Oh, I, I came across it the other day cause it's, uh, y- you talk about an incredible German sci-fi series that's incredibly interwoven and intricate and I followed it by saying I ordered Help I'm a Fish, <laughs> a movie that no one remembers from 2001 <laughs> so, um, um, yeah it's like around episode 13 or something yeah um, um, but I will I suppose we'll yeah, be summarising I couldn't say but it's in general, during our, just, our uh, earlier yeah. days of the podcast um, so what were your th- thoughts at the end of season 2 going into season 3 and then you can say you know launch into whatever you're going to uh, to say. So season two, uh, in general, is absolutely bloody brilliant. I loved season two. Had me absolutely hooked. Season one, uh, as I said earlier, it's a slow burn. It takes about three episodes to mm-hmm. click, and then it just keeps getting better and better. So it sort of it builds to being great, 
<clears throat> season two is great throughout. I, I would say, sorry, um, I joked, I, when I said <clears throat> I wouldn't, I would say that no, no, season two might actually be one of my favorite um, seasons of television. Um, ju- just thinking about it. Yes, I going would agree through with it you. again. It is phenomenal. Yeah, uh, yeah it, it, it really uh, is spectacular. Uh, sorry, two is you. almost flawless. Um, mm-hmm. So, um, at the end of season three, uh, at the end of season three, uh, the, the cliffhanger for season two introduces an element, and I think I said this about season one's ending as well, where it's like, mm, not a particular fan of this trope, so I don't know if I'm going to like it going forward. And um, after everything established mm. in two, mm. I was a little hesitant about three because I, I don't want to spoil anything for anyone that's not seen it um but you know where i'm going with this the the eve storyline well i tell you what um, we'll we'll we'll, we'll and, say it. we'll say um we'll put a, a disclaimer here and just say spoilers so from this point on um you, you it's better to watch dark we would recommend or i certainly would recommend that you oh, okay. that you watch it um we've done generalized discussions in the past at some point but yeah spoilers from here on out this is for people that have watched it and want to yeah understand what's happened sorry carry on okay so for a a show that had been all about time travel for the first two seasons to then bring in alternate timelines uh i i was very wary about season three going into that territory and I, i think three was consistently good i wasn't i found it a bit difficult at times to track places positions and movements because now we have not only people hopping back and forth in our own timeline but now we have interlopers from parallel dimensions and their timelines expanding out as well Mm. but they they did an absolutely brilliant job of weaving it all together um exceptionally good job of weaving it all together continuing to make the characters compelling and interesting and and the story building to this crescendo this never-ending infinity loop that is as I say in the show numerous times, that every single time you try and untie the knot, it just ties tighter. You know, mm. it's, it's unavoidable. And watching how it all plays out and the intricacy of it all is is fascinating, well plotted. Um, my criticisms of three come mainly from the last two episodes. Um, Interesting. And, and sort of elements of three dotted throughout, really. So we're, we're introduced to, uh, I'll, I'll call them the triplets, uh, the, the yes. triplets of time, <laughs> grandpa, co- middle age, and, and called, child. I think they're called the unknown, officially. The origin? Wrong. Yeah, the, the unknown the or the yeah, origin. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with yeah. the origin, yeah. They, they, yeah, they get brought in and they sort of take over what Noah seemed to be doing, but with more sort of um, zombie-like efficiency in season three and i couldn't quite or was it season two they got brought in uh, it, either way they sort of served the same purpose that no was doing but they were far less interesting mm. and then the reveal of who they are comes into it and it's like well that's that could be interesting but they don't really go anywhere with it um and for all the for everything they try and instill to make it them important to eve i never felt it i never believed it at all the the idea of the infinity loop with her and herself and herself and herself and the origin of the unknown that was that was interesting Mm -hmm. but i can't see at any point why these three mute hair-lipped psychopaths (laughs) would um, having met them in person uh, at all stages of their life why you would go you know what yeah this is worth killing the man i love for for these fish-lipped monsters um (laughs) so they seem very superfluous and achieve essentially nothing um at the expense of noah and his sister the other thing i found complicated was uh, what with all the extra sort of shenanigans the first two seasons and in fact, the first half of season three as well, two and a half scenes, they're really slow, very paced, very measured. And then suddenly we get to the latter end of season three and it's like, oh shit, yeah, what about Noah? Uh, what about Bartok? Yeah. What about uh, um, Noah's sister? Uh, what, what about Bartok's wife? And it's like, suddenly they realise that they've got all these other characters that they've not done anything with and they've got to quickly do something mm. with them so it felt like we sped through bartosh's entire family tree in the space of about five mm. flashbacks um 
And that really confused me because for the longest time I thought Bartosh was mm, Noah. I remember, yeah. I mean, it, I, I can see why I thought that now. Um, but the fact that I had to pause the final episode about 20 minutes before the end and look up just who the fuck are these characters <laughs> oh they're his son yeah. and daughter right that would have been really useful to know because they've been so quintessential for the first two seasons and then they're just gone um and it's a shame because they were so good uh, and then they ultimately serve no narrative purpose beyond what they had done but at the same time they realize how important they are that they've got to bring him in in the last minute uh, which really didn't help. Um, so so that irked me a bit. Um, the two others uh, that bothered me, I found, I'm going to call it the proper ending, I found the proper ending emotionally mm. satisfying. Um, I wish they'd chosen the original Louis Armstrong it's version. It's a terrible of, uh, version isn't wonderful it? it's fucking yeah. atrocious and i get it you know it's the the woman that sings um the yeah. intro to song so it's like okay yeah but a synergy there but it's it's distractingly mm. bad uh which is a shame because it's it's a beautiful yes. moment while it's happening um so that i'm fine with what i'm a little bit unhappy with is uh in episode are there eight episodes yes. in total so the beginning of episode seven they go um oh um the uh, the clockmaker is building something, and then they forget about it. And then in episode eight, they go. Turns out he's the origin point who created it all, and he's the original universe. And you're like, where the fuck mm. did that come from? He built a time machine. When did he build a time machine? <laughs> or what do you mean? We're we're at the crux point of this, you know, this three uh, three season long mini season arc, and. Um, and then suddenly, at the last minute, they go, uh, oh, yeah, that guy over there. Um, in another timeline, uh, he built a time machine and he got fucked up. And everything we know of is based off mm. him. Uh, and now we're going to spend the last 10 minutes of this show dealing with two characters we've never met before, have no emotional investment in, um, and, and watch their story play out at the sake of all these other characters. Um, that felt really not cheap but it was frustrating mm. because they weren't well the, the wife didn't say all that much but his son wasn't particularly likable yeah <laughs> so, so we're going to sacrifice all these characters that we really like for this dipshit <laughs> fuck him <laughs> let the knot continue to be woven throughout eternity let a, an infinity more of infinities of adam and eve's little game plan roll out forever i don't give a fuck about this clockmaker's son um so yeah, that I didn't like that. Um, I felt it really undermined everything, and and the the self sacrifice and everything that came with it. Again, beautiful stuff. It's just how we got there uh, that that irritated me. It just seemed so rushed for a show that was so methodical and and well paced and and plotted. Mm. It's almost like they wanted to go for another season, but they realised, oh, we haven't got enough material for another season, so we'll cram it in here. Um, and then the epilogue scene, I really didn't like. I think they should have just ended it on the nice, ambiguous, oh, everyone just sort of fades away into sparks, and, and that's it. And that would have been nice. But watching, um, uh, is it Helen? Hannah. Hannah. Watching Hannah have a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the monster that she is. Watching her having fun with all of the friends that we've watched her screw over in two different dimensions, uh, and having a dinner party with... Uh, a disparate collection of people. Mm. I, I, it makes sense when you sort of like, you see who's paired with who, and it's like, what, why is that person missing? And then you start putting it together. Oh, of course they yeah. would be there. Then. Of course he'd be there. Of course she'd be there. That all makes sense. It all ties in. Um, but I just felt that it was a really sort of ham-fisted scene, not particularly well acted. And uh, her going off on a sort of soliloquy about a dream I had the other night and everyone's sitting in rapt silence as only people in movies do when anybody starts talking about their fucking dreams. Um, side note, uh, if you ever feel like telling anybody about a dream, don't. <laughs> because dreams are only interesting to the person that dreamt them because mm. you were in them. <laughs> if we're not in them, we have no interest. 
dad. So please stop telling us about your dreams. We don't give a shit. Um, so yeah, and then it just sort of fades out, and then it's like, oh, I think I'll name my my child Jonas, and and it's like, uh, and then it ends, uh, and it's like you should have ended it a scene earlier. She she might have well have said, I'm gonna name my baby Hope. <laughs> Hope for a brat of tomorrow. It's just like, or Adam, just I just. I don't know, man. It was just... It was going so well. And then... Right in in the final two episodes of season three... It, it just sort of... It never falls flat on its face. But it, it trips and stumbles enough that... You know, it took me out the mm. show. Which is something that never happened... Until the final two episodes. And... Um, yeah, it's a shame. I Again, overall, brilliant. Brilliant show. Highly recommend it to, to anyone that... <laughs> Anyone that is happy to have it spoiled <laughs> and, uh, and is sitting through it, I I would really recommend this show to anybody that likes sci-fi, good character drama, um, good head scratching sort of whodunits, and uh, and just trying to unravel the 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 sheer time hopping shenanigans of it all. But uh, yeah, I, I can't help but feel a little bit underwhelmed as it ended, particularly as your initial. Well, your your review of it last year was say it all came together so perfectly. You know, not not one stone was left unturned, and it's only in the final moments you realise <clears throat> how intricately this entire thing is interconnected. In the final seconds, you see how every little strand is is sort of tied and woven together, and um, perhaps because of that, I was more aware of things that weren't adding up or weren't properly explained or did seem to be sort of jammed in mm. there at the, uh, the the crucial moment to try and explain something that that just hadn't had the time to breathe beforehand. Um, but as I say, all that aside... Oh, oh also, um, Martha's uh, brother, is it... Um, Mama, Mama, oh, Mama, uh, what's his name? Macintosh. No, uh, Martha's brother is uh oh god damn it um it's um uh no um mickles mickles the younger brother mickles the younger one it's because he kind of disappears quite often it is yeah looking now looking now magnus of course it's magnus Magnus, of course. Magnus, Magnus, Magnus. Um, Magnus and... Is it Elizabeth or is she the deaf one? Elizabeth is... Is it Rebecca, the older sister? Um, uh, yeah, Elizabeth is the is the younger one. You're thinking of... Um, it begins with R. I'm sure it begins with R. Uh, is it Rachel or Rebecca? I think it's Rebecca. It's not Rebecca. It's... Um, uh, Rapunzel. It's not Rapunzel. It's... Uh, Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> Francesca, even. <laughs> it begins with R. Francesca, the, the, yes, there's of an course. R in Francesca. Francesca. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a very silent R. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what it is about those two, but I found them really... They were like the two characters that really dragged me into the first season. Um, so I was quite invested in them. And um, it just felt like, despite being the initial and by the end of it the sole apostles of adam that they would have more significance in the adam related storyline for all the time that they had you know in their their teen years mm. and then knowing that they end up paired with adam essentially to the bitter end um they did feel like afterthoughts in the future who, who appear to get used to sort of bring um martha to another dimension or another timeline and they just felt underutilized yeah elizabeth had uh more of a character arc, and elizabeth's character arc, absolutely superb you know the aerobarus of all of that um yeah it, it just seems so odd how certain characters fizzled out despite still being really important to essential characters and, and quintessential plot points uh whereas other characters uh were just sort of there but then had dramatic impact on the world. And, and to, to some extent, <clears throat> that's good, you know, mm. <laughs> uh, because it is the smallest things that can have the biggest impact and, you know, uh, a person's minute um, impact on the world can have huge ramifications. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Uh, but, yeah, it, it did just feel like Magnus and uh, Francesca just, uh, just sort of 
faded out and and that was that so uh that that was disappointing for me as well also i didn't like martha's new haircut also she also was what sorry really attractive and uh martha's haircut wasn't all oh, right <laughs> <laughs> I really, I've, I thought she was really attractive in season one, especially season two. She was stunning uh, in season two. But her stupid, um, who did it remind me of? She uh, goes full emo, doesn't she? Who, who's that one? It's not quite emo. It's um, I want to say Jennifer Lawrence. <gasps> is she the one? Mystique? It is Jennifer Lawrence. Yes, you're absolutely. Yes, right. yeah. she has the Jennifer Lawrence look in season three, and it's really distracting because yeah, it, it just oh. nagging at me. The base is like there's something about this haircut and this fringe and this sort of this rounded face that's now on display, and it's just it's it's narking me, <laughs> and I can't work out why. And it's only now in in this moment that I realise it's fucking Jennifer Lawrence. It is. <laughs> so damn it. Um, yeah, also, um, I, I assume that I'm only bringing these up because these are the niggles. No, that's fine, that's that, fine, that's fine. Um, I think you'll be interested in, in what I have to say the, um, when, when you're done, so carry on. Oh, jolly by good. All means. Again, this isn't to take away from the, the brilliance of the show. Again, highly recommended, absolutely loved it. These are just my, my little gripes that I felt stopped it from being absolute perfection mm. as a whole. Um, the... The sort of the um, the endless cycle of things, uh, and when <clears throat> uh, Claudia finally sort of unveils herself to to Adam at the end, and it's like, aha, this is this is the end game now. We're actually here at the end of it, and Adam goes to Eve, and she sort of recounts that uh, this is where it all spirals. This is where my past self sees you murder my older self, and it perpetuates the cycle anew, and he doesn't kill her. Uh, and she goes, oh, my worldview has exploded. We're best friends again now. Um, mm. <laughs> that felt in- incredibly rushed as I just sort of sat back and watched the world end. And uh, again, thematically, it it works mm. um, because of everything. You know, this, this endless loop that they've been trapped on, the idea that it's something so small is enough to sort of break their cycle. But at the same time, it... it it felt like too small of a thing to have sort of the impact that it did uh, af- after everything. Um, it's it, it's kind of difficult to pin down what it was that didn't quite work for me about it, even though I could see why it should be working for me. It it, it just didn't quite catch yeah. as as it should yeah. uh, to to get the the results that it did. Um, I think top of my head that's everything i can think of for now but um yeah so this is this is your rewatch of it you blitzed it all last night so um yeah t- tell me your thoughts I did. Where, I... where have i gone wrong where have you reassigned things? i did i said up until four o'clock uh, last night to watch it um <laughs> exclusively for this <laughs> for this conversation um yeah so i mean <laughs> Um, series one and season two, I think I mentioned the last time, I actually enjoyed more on the rewatch than first time. Absolutely loved it. Um, I know, you know, I really enjoyed season one on the first run through. I understand why some people, what you know, it took a while, you say, to, to get into it. For whatever reason, these characters just from the beginning, um, I just enjoyed. I, I enjoyed the dourness of the world and how just bleak everything was and the sense of foreboding just from one scene to the next the sense of mystery and um just just a confusion and you know just nothing appearing as it seems that just goes through every every single uh scene it's so detailed it's so well thought out and i could see that from 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 the very first episode and that's what i really appreciated about it and still do and so um those rewatches of the first and second season were just spellbinding to 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 me i absolutely adored it i can't i can't you know recommend enough to watch this series wait 6 months and then watch it again and just reappreciate hmm. all the little things um one, one of my favorite things that obviously you don't notice on the first watch is um when uh when um middle jonas um comes back and meets hannah for the first time you know and she's she's trying to you know he 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 reveals himself as 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 jonas and she isn't sure i don't know if you remember that scene it's in the middle of season two i think and um i do yeah, yeah and he sits down at the table and he looks to his left and he looks down on the floor and his face just goes white 
and it's something that, hmm. that you don't notice on the first watch because it doesn't mean anything but watching it again that's course, that's yeah. where martha's <laughs> killed and just those little bits those, those little things that is is just peppered throughout the uh throughout the series it's I, I love it i love it so much the attention to detail and how this entire story was weaved just from top to bottom before um the show even began and it, it really shows it really shows i mentioned to you um i think this is right but like the the intro is a giveaway of the entire series and you don't even realize which is that the mirror yeah. the mirror universes what what's happening in one um uh, world is happening in the other world um that's what it's supposed to represent uh so it's just constantly leaving hints and clues <laughs> and things that, that you don't even really realize um so i the first two seasons are some of my absolute favorite seasons of of of, of, of tv um the so I, I very much agree with you about the end of season two. Um, the first time I saw it, I had the same reaction of, oh, no, I don't like where this is heading. And it was really interesting watching it back again because I realized, it's funny how, how your mind plays tricks with itself. Um, I loved the end of season three the first time I saw it, which is, you know, uh, goes to, to what you were saying about how uh, lavishly I, I gushed over it. Um and I completely forgot that I did not like the first few episodes of season three. Um, and just as a, as a bit of a deeper story, I didn't like the end of season two. Didn't like the idea of bringing a, a, another world into it when the time travel aspect was just so watertight and so good. It felt, I thought, not knowing anything about the um, the the development of the show, that this was the writer's trying to do a lost you know it, it felt like season three of lost and being like oh they're just kicking the can further down the road they're thinking of new ideas this is so uh old hat it's it just reeks of desperation and um i was watching it with uh with with a friend of mine and she she we, we watched the first two seasons together and we got two episodes into season three and she said i can't deal with this anymore this is just this is just silly now and hmm. i was having the same emotions of thinking this is playing into exactly what I expected it to. Episode one of season three is essentially recounting the very first episode, um, but in Martha's shoes. And it's got some nice moments. You know, Martha's the one with the yellow jacket now, and she, uh, you know, she she's in Jonas's bedroom, but everything's flipped. It's really quite fun how they flip everything, and it's just the the mirror world, mm. as it were. Um, but then it it it's very slow and you kind of thinking okay i get the point i get what you're trying to say and, and it is it's just a retelling of, of episode one and things i just find the first few episodes of um season three really slow i don't i mean it, it's interesting i think that you found that the last two episodes were, were what you picked up on um but ev even on the rewatch i thought these first four episodes it's th i think they're even slower than the rest of the two seasons <laughs> And I think that they're treading water and they're laying the groundwork for what comes eventually. But I don't think they are, um, especially considering season two is like every episode of season two is feels like the end of a season in its revolu in its revelations. It is yeah. stunning how many revelations they fit into those episodes, and it just you're just having your mind blown consistently. Um, season three at the beginning really slows down, and starts to go through things that on the rewatch i was like oh, this this does feel like a drag i remember watching the, these episodes and thinking oh so this is just martha in jonas's position I've, I've, we've seen this well, you know I, I i get it kind of thing and and, yeah. and like you were saying about the origin the unknown whatever you want to call them they were okay but i feel as i, I don't think they hid the fact of who they were i don't know uh, was it just when they revealed them to be the sons of um, Martha and Jonas that you realised, or did you pick up on that earlier? Because they do kind of um, telegraph it. Uh, I I don't think so. I think the show had to spell that one out okay. for me. Okay, all right. Uh, I kind of twigged because there's a there's a shot that they do, and you think, oh, okay, is that is that what you're trying to tell me? Um, so the first four episodes, I think, are. They have some good moments in uh, Katarina um, meeting um, Ulrich 
um, in uh, you know future Ulrich is good. I like that. That's that's a nice little moment mm. for the for the both of them. Um, but all in all, I think the first four episodes are really quite forgettable. And um, yeah, I I stopped for the longest time. I got to. I think it was the halfway mm. point. Um, the episode that ends when you find out that the the trio yeah. are uh, the sons of uh, Jonas. Yeah, and yeah, that's, I, that, that's episode I sort four. Of yeah, two months, three by flew by, and it's like oh, I'll get around to it eventually. Yeah, but it, it did kill my enthusiasm. Yeah, and and that's pretty much the attitude that I had. And it, as I say, even on the rewatch, I got to episode four, and I, I was thinking, God, if I didn't know what comes, I'd, I'd probably give up on this myself because it's just it's it just feels like it's ground to a halt and the other world wasn't dragging me in again. It just felt like kicking the can down the road as if they were making it up as they went along. And then episode five hits and it's like bang. And I don't know if, if you felt this, but episode five, I think is just insane because you've got, um, yes. Episode five brought me back in fourfold. Otherwise I would have just sort of given it a tertiary and then probably left it again for another few weeks. But after episode five is like, no, I've got to finish this like this week. Episode five has some of the absolute all time best moments in the uh, series. As far as I'm concerned, um, the, the headliner of which is one of the absolute best, just, just top three moments where Katarina's mom (laughs) (laughs) kills her. (laughs) And drags her body into the lake. It is insane. That blew my mind the first time I saw that. I was literally on the edge of my seat (laughs) just with my hands in my head. It's, oh, I loved it. I loved it. Um, Screaming, poor Ulrich, when will he catch a break? (laughs) Exactly. All he did was have an affair. Why does his life have to turn out to be a pile of shit? And I don't, uh, uh, did you pick up on the significance of that, of Katarina in the lake? Did you did you did you uh, mind twig uh, to season two? Uh, to be fair, it had been two, maybe three months. Okay, so okay. Not. Well, um, oh, I don't I don't want to spoil this, but I, it'll be a while since you uh, f- for you to watch it again. I'm, I'm sure. So, in season two, when during the lake episode, um, where they're all kind of uh, tomfoolering in the lake, and um, mm. Uh, Magnus kind of uh, drags um, uh, Martha under the water or something like that, and they try and spook her, <laughs> try and spook her with tales of the drown lady at the bottom of the lake. Um, th- this kind of oh, ghost story. Wow. Yes, yes. On the <laughs> oh, oh, that's fantastic. It's an amazing little uh, bit of attention to detail that their mum is the Ugh. dead lady at the bottom of the lake. It was true. This 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 ghost story that they're telling and Katarina's underneath them. It's it's just oh my god, it's insane. Oh, you're right. That made be my favourite thing of the whole show. Yes, you'll have to <laughs> you'll have to go back and watch that scene in season two now, knowing that that's the thing. Um, well, it was probably the best part of season two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that that it is. It is. That's such an amazing scene. And then to tie this into it, oh, that's it's, when it all it starts just coming home. Goes to show how amazing this uh, show is when it fires on all cylinders. Um, so, so you've got that <laughs> in in episode five, and then Jonas is killed at the end of uh, episode five, where you're like, holy shit, what? Um, mm. And and that's kind of I think. So first four episodes, I, uh, right? Okay, I'll go back on the first rewatch. The final four episodes for me personally, um, just made the first four episodes worth it because the first four episodes are putting the, the the puzzle pieces together and then the final four episodes are the payoff and as you're saying it and mm. it, it, it answers them scattershot and quickly but it answers them and i found it a really satisfying yeah. ending most specifically for how they end uh, martha and jonas's story which as you say i, I it's one of my mm. all-time favorite endings J- just their ending specifically putting to one side you know the horrendous um uh what a wonderful world and whatever else i think the end of their story as it's played out is it just again it it was another moment where i was actually on the edge of my seat tensed up thinking oh god oh god oh god you know your your willingness to to have a really satisfying conclusion because that's it feels like it or it felt to me like this big 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 moment like there's still stuff that can go wrong here 
and I don't know if you had this thought as well that um <laughs> that the douche son is driving in the rain down down this road and they appear in the road terminator style <laughs> and you're expecting him to careen yes. off the road and that's what kills them <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that would have been pretty good yeah i actually <laughs> thought that to be the uh i thought oh christ that's what happens um but no i i think i think <laughs> jonas and martha's relationship is really special and how they tie a, a bow on it is exquisite and um it felt very end of evangelion it, exactly exactly i um i think i was on I, I was i wasn't on the verge of tears but i felt like i could have easily been uh the first time just because of if it weren't for the music if it was the original louis armstrong version they probably could have took well, me over the edge i mean that doesn't kick in until jonas and martha's scene finishes um they do the uh, they do the yeah. wonderful world for everyone else as that as they're disappearing uh, but there's there's this sparse electronica that that goes on as they're disappearing, which is very reminiscent of the rest of the series, and um, that is just perfect. And yeah, just just their story, I think, is outstanding. And the fact that we are essentially, I think that's like Jonas Mark II when you talk about Evangelion stuff. It, 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 they're all like on Mark two or three <laughs> of each character at the minute. It's like this isn't the Jonas that we that we actually started with, but sure, we'll we'll, we'll go with it. <laughs> Um, It'll yeah, do. and and just <laughs> just the weird two thousand one space odyssey aspect of when they're going through the uh, like wormhole or whatever it is. I just found it really emotional and really really mm-hmm. satisfying. So, oh uh, yeah, the wormhole. But I didn't enjoy the wormhole. But there was just something about it to me that made it. I'm not sure, but I, I appreciated it. And I, I think if it, it went on a bit too long, I think it. Yeah. Um, I can understand that. It showed its length, the fact that we had to have the Jonas part, and then the Martha part, and then they reunite, and then they go through a doorway. It um, it took longer than it needed to, and I didn't quite get the whole we were in each other's doorways. I was always standing in your doorway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I don't know if there's a greater explanation to that. It is a bit strange, but at the same time, there is a... I don't know, it's just the romantic sentiment of it, I think, which I... I'm happy to glob yeah, on. I mean, to. it's it's a it's <laughs> it's an emotional and a narrative payoff that works. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and uh, at the end of it all, unlike um, oh no, carry on. Yeah, and and so I was just gonna say I I I just felt really satisfied by the ending, and I think it was a lot of that was being overwhelmed by as you were saying that the last two episodes are just hammer and tong belting you over the head with the revelations you know noah being bartosh's son um especially mm. considering that noah kills bartosh um uh, you know it's it's, yes. it's just one thing after another of being like oh these are all the the hidden moments that that, that oh, the the last little strands that that needed filling in and um i didn't mind the but they were the really interesting ones y- that was it, though. You know, we spent so much time with Eve and Adam, who by this point we understood yeah. so well. Uh, and it's like, but I want to see more of Bartosh's family and Noah's family and Noah's going on. And, and instead, they just paid lip service in order to tie off the threads. Yeah, so um, I, yeah, as I say, I think I am. Um, it's just because by the end of episode four, I'd stopped expecting something from the show. And I think I watched the final four episodes all in one mm. go. And it was going from no expectations to suddenly having everything fulfilled. Well, not everything fulfilled, but, you know, going from nothing to, oh, this is actually really good again now. Um, and just being on that wild ride of filling in the blanks and things and s- such an emotional payoff. And that's why I was on such a, a high about it. And I will still maintain that it's a, um, a great show. Um, but on this second rewatch of the third season specifically, I'll put aside the first four episodes because I've, I've already kind of talked about that. Um, yeah, I agree with you um, more than I I would have done. I'm not going to shit on it completely, but there are a lot that bothers me that I think you just kind of worked yourself into a hole there and didn't really know how to explain this, so you've kind of shifted the goalposts a little bit. Mm. I think... Um, the what's the what's the terms they use? It's a um ah oh, it's 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 the term they use for why they have two Jonases. Um it's a quantum quantum 
quant quantum entanglement. entanglement. Well remembered. Thank you. Yes, the idea of a, a quantum entanglement, which means that um, in one scenario Martha gets Jonas, and in another scenario she doesn't. She's stopped by Bartosh, and um, I don't know how that glossed over me in, in the first watching because the quantum entanglement thing needs to um, be a thing for them to escape this loop, um, which makes sense. That works. Mm. There needs to be that in quantum entanglement for Claudia to um, change Adam's mind in one of these, you know, infinite endless loops. That makes sense. That's good. But when you bring in a second quantum entanglement, the Jonas thing, then <laughs> it becomes a matter of, well, mm. surely there, there are infinite quantum entanglements that could happen and they're simultaneously yeah. affecting each other. And that really affected my um, enjoyment of the last um, three episodes, more so than, than I ever thought it would. Um, I, I'm still appreciating everything as it's happening, but just that little, little niggling thing mm. of, you know, it's, it's the Avengers Endgame of it really, isn't it? Where um, the, 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 the good thing about Avengers Endgame, you could say, was they were constantly aware of all these multiverses. And in one of the multiverses, uh, they did everything right. And then they go about kind of putting everything into, into, uh, in, into motion. The good thing about Dark has always been this linearity, linearity to it and that you can't mm. escape time, can't escape your destiny, almost. And so to then, with three episodes left, say, ah, yes, but then there was a change. <laughs> you know, this, this, this is the one... <laughs> yes. Th th this is the one exception to the rule where, um, where time didn't uh, loop. And I was just like, how did I not pick up on this? This is a really, really shitty way of saying... Mm. Jonas's story can't exist the way that we say it exists. So we just have to put this little asterisk and say, oh, there are two Jonases. You know, mm. why, uh, yeah, why aren't there mm. always these different... You know, and, and it brings into it, it brings the multiverse into what linearity, as I was saying. And that annoyed me because um, we had an instance where we had quite clearly two worlds that were feeding off each other. And then all of a sudden, as I saw it, we mm. had three worlds because now there are three separate timelines. And then, as you were saying at the end of the show, um, uh, uh, Claudia says, ah, but there are three worlds. And I'm thinking to myself, no, but we actually already have three worlds. There, there are four worlds that we're dealing with. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, you have to forget yeah. about that other third one. <laughs> and, it, and it's really annoying. A bit, uh, it, it annoyed me how... Um, they didn't think of a more clever way to to cover up those tracks because i i do really like the the revelation uh, that that um that the jonas that we've been following and and thinking with the same character a two com uh, well not completely different characters but they they have two different destinies two different futures and i think that that mm. is such a good way to and i actually completely forgot that that was the case which is just goes to show again about how um forgettable i suppose a lot of season three is compared to one and two um <laughs> so it's banking on you forgetting it or being so overridden with I think, information yes that exactly that that last sort of bit it. i think you're exactly right too much information um so re-watching the series season one and two i completely forgot that was the case which is a shame because how they fill in the gaps of um you know our jonas we we think it's because he went into the future and was nearly hung by um, uh, Elizabeth. And actually, that's not the case. Um, our Jonas uh, tries to kill himself. Um, oh, no, no, it's the other one. No, sorry, future Jonas, I should say. The, the stranger Jonas, yes, Jonas yes, tries to, himself. to kill himself. And it's, it's our, so our Jonas goes into the future. He's nearly hung. That's how he's got the, uh, the scar around his neck. Whereas stranger Jonas tries to kill himself and so it's just the kind of filling in of the blanks to let us know that these are two different characters I think all that's really good it's just the um the framing of it where you know it, it's it's the old paradoxes you find yourself in in these types of situations of well if you have one multiverse and you've got to deal with all of them and um yeah it, it just felt for as good as the show is when it fits into the linearity of of just this is time travel it loses a bit of its momentum when they bring in uh, that and multi-dimensions multi because mm. 
I mean, they probably they probably do fill it in, but I think there are possibly questions to be asked as well in, well, how does um, Eva's world find itself interacting with Adam's world? Because I know that they go through mm. all the same... They don't... Things don't play out exactly the same way, but the things do happen. But but they have a completely different technology. Yes. Adams allows transfer through time, and they can go through time and dimensions. Yes. The the weird golden snitch thing. I never liked the design of those. You know, mm. the one time machine looks sort of clunky, and it's like, okay, I'll give it a pass because that looks sort of interesting. But the other one is like bizarre steampunk future tech, and everyone seems to know exactly how to calibrate how to at use all times. It. Like the scene where. <laughs> Where where Jonas rugby tackles Martha, you know, the last second into the exact timeline they need to mm. be in, and it's like, but no one, Adam didn't tell you how to use this. You just like opened it and clacked it, and then rugby tackled. Yeah, it. Um, and, and yeah. So I, I get another one of those things where there's such meticulous effort in one sense, and then a complete disregard of oh hand waviness in, in yeah, the other. and especially when we we construct. Uh, consigned to such rules in the first two seasons of 33 years forward 33 years back and i'm not mm -hmm. saying that again the creators are incredibly intelligent and i'm very sure that they have an answer for all of the little niggly bits that we're mentioning but there, there, there does seem to be a bit of a disregard as you were saying for how these uh devices work that obviously can transport you to when and wherever you want um but like martha when she goes back in time to Jonas in the 1800s. Uh, she goes back and then she just seems to go forward again to the 2050s and she appears at exactly mm. where she needs to be. Um, whereas, yeah. like you were saying, it, it's a bit strange that Jonas goes and then takes Martha and they go into the uh, third world, but not <laughs> on the specific day and date that they need to. They turn up in the current day, yeah. and then they need to go back 33 years or whatever it is, through the cave. <laughs> and I'm like, why didn't you just <laughs> go to, you know, use it? It's uh, just really bizarre. Um, and that was the beauty of the 33 yes. years, because it really did lock you in, you know. It's like, if you, you mess up, you've got 33 years, and there's no going back or forward, from, well, forward, obviously, but there's there's no going back from there. You are locked into 33 years. The moment you can start hopping about willy-nilly, yeah. you think, well, why hasn't Eve won this war? Because she has the complete freedom of time mm. at her disposal. Mm. Yeah, and it's it's similar to what you were saying about the, the unknown and how they, you're kind of watching them do their thing, and I like them from the sense that they're menacing, and I think that each actor mm. does a fantastic job. Um the the lead guy i mean you can say he's a, he's, he's a bit bland they don't offer anything but i think him and the kid are just so creepy the the kid especially just looks like oh the vibe yeah, yeah it's just amazing um and then when you really think about it it's like okay so they're popping up throughout time to make things happen as they're supposed to but um wh why are they killing the sick mundus guy <laughs> you know i don't think that's ever really yeah. explained um uh, the, uh, maybe there is it's buried it, they just had an element of uh, do you remember the end of season three of lost where it's like oh we've got to move the island yes or was that season four yeah yeah uh, and it's just like uh, you, you do what now you just you pull a lever and you move well, it's, the it's, island it's, it's, and i say this as a lost fan it's like a big it's crank like, what the <laughs> fuck are you on about <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you turn the crank in the polar ice cave and and the island disappears in time it's like oh, okay um, so i mean Lost gets a bit more leniency because there's weird metaphysical and magic essentially going on. But um, <clears throat> for a show as grounded in, it's time mechanics as dark. Yeah, I think um, uh, th it, it gets harder for them to wave away I'll, laws I always say that I give Lost a pass because I'm more interested in the characters than the plot. That was always the case for me. I mm. wasn't, you know, the island was like a neither here nor there. That was just a, a means to understanding these characters better as far as I was concerned. Um, like you were saying, Dark is so... Um, the, the, the very fabric is the time travel mechanic, so it, you do have to come down a little bit harder on it. And as I say, I'm sure that the, um, uh, that the creators have got a glossary that explains all of this stuff, such is the exquisiteness with which they went through with the fine tooth comb to make sure that every little nook and cranny is taken care of. Um, but 
like you were saying, it's just the speed at which it, it's like Lost, uh, not Lost, uh, Game of Thrones season seven or whatever it was, where you know suddenly we go from spending an entire season on this journey from one side of uh, what the country to the other side. Now it's like in the space of 15 minutes, you know, that journey happens. And, yeah. and and the final couple of episodes, I do agree with you absolutely that all these revelations, these big hard hitting revelations are incredibly interesting. And I want to know more about, as you were saying, uh, what, why do um, uh, Magnus and Francesca become such devout followers of Adam when, you know, there seems to be so much um, conflict between them in the 1800s where they're losing faith in Adam and Bartosz, you, mm. you, you know, they get into fights and things. And uh, That would have so much to really focus on, that, the dynamic of those four in particular. Mm. But then it gets caught upon the time, well, the, the dimension-hopping Martha aspect of it. And it's like, oh, that's the... The least, one of the most interesting things about Martha is, you know, she she dies, and it's the catalyst for Jonas into Adam, uh, and, and then it's like, oh no, she's alive, and and she's now like a, pretty much a third of the entire plot going forward. And it's like it's it's the clone syndrome as well for me. I think, isn't it? You you're always yeah. aware that this isn't our Martha kind of thing. You you spent two seasons getting um, attached to our Martha and then she's killed and then this new one's brought into it and you have empathy with her because this is a brand new situation for her but she's still not our Martha you know it's, it's similar to to the emotions mm -hmm. that Jonas has um well consistently he has it a few times where it's like you look just like her <laughs> yeah, you're not my aunt anymore so it's not as <laughs> sort of kinky weird <laughs> uh, yeah exactly um you know uh, another thing that I was very um disappointed by incredibly disappointed actually this is one of like the big things i must have buried it um when um when hannah turns up to meet adam in the future and she's got her daughter from the parallel earth oh yeah and that confused me for a bit because it's like well this is a different adam because there's no jonas in your your universe um so this doesn't track particularly well with me no but no that's that's jonas's original for... universe that's because um uh, Hannah is pregnant with um, uh, 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 Tiedemann's um, baby. She she never has the abortion. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's that's a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So scrap that. But at the same time, uh, it's almost like oh, we haven't finished off Hannah's storyline. Uh, tell yes. you what, just have a turn up, and then she gets killed, and yeah. that's it. And it's like, but she was the most. Uh, of all the monsters that this show had churned out, she was one of the best that I really wanted to see get some form of comeuppance. Mm. And she she just got sort of written out of the show because like, they didn't know what to do with her. So they just mm. brought her in, killed her off in a way that didn't really make any sense for her character or why she was there in the first place. Um, and, uh, and then that was it. She was gone until she gets a happy ending in earth prime and it's like no of all the people that deserve a non-happy <laughs> ending it should not be her um ulrich doesn't get a happy ending uh claudia uh, claudette doesn't uh, get one uh, um yeah uh, it's claudia like does. all the people that that get off uh, uh, not claudia sorry um uh the, the lady of the lake <laughs> uh no uh katarina does yeah katarina in, katarina in earth prime in earth prime she does yeah um but um yeah I don't know, it, it just feels like Hannah gets off really, really lightly yeah. for everything that she's done yeah. to stir the pot and uh, and cause a lot of the conflicts and frictions that sort of cause all of this to, to fan out from the initial point in episode one mm. and most of season one. Um, it, it just felt she was an afterthought. Mm. And, and again, it, it irked me that she was like the character we end on with like all of her yeah. friends and a kid on the way. It's just like, no, fuck Hannah. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's the worst. She's the absolute worst. It's like, um, oh, what's the name of uh, Mara Hindley? It's like if Mara Hindley got the happy ending in a parallel earth and it's like, well, I don't know anything about your earth, Mara Hindley, but our Mara Hindley certainly <laughs> fucking doesn't deserve to be the central focus for the end of this. Um <laughs> 
So yeah, that that sprang to mind. Mm. Um, Hannah's interesting insofar as she's the only one really that we're not aware of her uh, her, her own parentage, and uh, mm. that's that's not actually delved into. You think of the rest of the people at the table. Katerina, we know about her and her mother and her upbringing. Um, I've, um, oh, was it Peter? Of course, Peter. Yeah, he, we know that um, his who, who his father is, and um, y- you know uh, Helga, and uh, we we don't know any, his mother, which is interesting. I always found that um, mm. we just know that she died, but it, it would have been interesting to know who's going to shack up with you know a mentally handicapped <laughs> guy. It's a, you know questions to be had. Yeah, because didn't they didn't they hint that it was um, Claudia's? Claudia or Claudia's mum or someone? No. There was one bit where I had to pause the show because it's like uh, a baby gets brought into it and the character, old man. Yeah, that's another bit. When Adam's sort of sending his apostles back in time and he's got them all lined up and there's just like an old man. And it's like, I don't know who you are. You mean um, Eva? And he's standing next to a woman. You mean Eva? It could like have been it? Eva. It was e- Eva has this, yeah. the scene where they're all um, stood outside of the uh, the big black void thing. And she's sending them back to do. Yeah, it. and they're all being sent. Yeah, off. that was it, it, And she sends just this random guy. No, that, and I had no idea who he was. And then you see him standing next to a woman with a baby, and he goes, "All this time, I thought I was the father." And it's like, "But who are you?" <laughs> oh no, that's um, that's Tronta. That's um, Ulrich's dad. Um, uh, Tronta was important because um, Tronta's the guy that knows um, Claudia from when she's young. Um, she's. Uh, he's um what's her name um sister of um sister of noah uh she she's noah's sister and she stays at the yeah. uh tiedemann's house and yeah. uh tronta is another character who sort of went nowhere yes unfortunately and tronta is her son and so he, right. so he he marries um uh ulrich's mum who doesn't really have a big role you'd have thought she would have done and so, so they have Ulrich, but he's also secretly having an affair with Claudia. And so he thinks right. that because he's having an affair with Claudia, that Regina is his daughter. And it turns out that it's not. It is actually the previous owner of the power plant that she has uh, Regina okay. with. Uh, so trying to... See, that makes sense yeah. now. But the problem is that these characters are so peripheral. Yes. And when you're sort of jamming them in, and we're seeing parallel dimension versions of yep. them then going into alternate timelines and it's like i i cracked open the wikipedia page and i was trying to like scan the family tree as to who was what uh and i i couldn't make head nor tails of who the hell he was <laughs> or why he was important enough to be name dropped and and have like a, a scene mm. um yeah no i will I'll, yeah, that... I'll i'll back you up there because he is kind of important in the first few one of the first few episodes because they suspect him of mm. being the murderer of the first boy that yes. appears, and then he just disappears. Um, apart from his young, yeah. his younger self appears in season two, but he, as 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 an adult, just is, is not in it until the final few episodes. And so I can totally understand. I probably did the same of being like, "Wait, who is who, who is this guy?" <laughs> and now he's just killing Regina <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so no, that's that's totally understandable. Um. Yeah, I, you need to be off um, early tonight, don't you? Do you uh, do you want to leave it there? We've uh, discussed dark uh, a lot. Um, I don't want to. Uh, yeah, you, um... <laughs> I suppose we should. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that was a. It's been really good though. Uh, clearly, I enjoy the show a lot. We both enjoy the show a lot. Absolutely. Uh, it's as I say, not not flawless, but I think you know, in a, in a media landscape where good content is hard to find, let alone really good content. Uh, yeah, The Dark is, by and large, one of the better shows. Yes. It's not for everybody. It's certainly not for everybody. No. Uh, but um, for those that do take to it, uh, I'd say by the midpoint of season one, um, yeah, by and large, the payoffs are there. Yeah, absolutely. I I mean, despite my kind of re-evaluation of, of, of season three, I it's not really enough to hamper my enjoyment of the series as a whole i think the first two seasons for me are just so amazingly fantastic that i can kind of put aside season tr- three as an above average you know <laughs> season i still think yeah it floats it yeah i, I still think it, it's a great season it just doesn't match 
um, seasons mm. one and two. But you know, the twists and turns when it does reach its highs are still are still incredibly high. As, as I was saying, the Katarina scene with the mother and the lake is is just mm. wow. Um, and and yeah. you know, the shock of them killing Jonas is is again another one of those twists that's that's really fun, even if it doesn't make sense. But you know, you whatever. I I, I think I think that's the point. Season one and two, you can really be at ease in thinking this is some of the best science fiction ever written and then season three you just have to turn your mind off a bit and say okay it still <laughs> it, it still knows what it's, it's doing to an end. yeah it, it makes sense and it's you know within within its own laws it makes sense and just be happy about that i guess if that makes sense um, <laughs> which i am more than happy to do uh, so yeah, dark, excellent. I am looking forward to leaving it another few years and maybe watching it afresh again and uh, and just just going through the highs and lows once more because I think it's mm. sensational. Uh, yes, I agree with you there. Absolutely brilliant. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad that you think so. so ha ha! So you you thought that I would hate it based Hello? on my text. Sorry. Hello. Uh, you, so you, you were worried that I uh, I didn't like it. Yeah. No. I was I was completely wrong. It's just how you phrased. Um, uh, you, you said something which made me think that um, uh, you were and and uh, I can't remember. But yeah, I did. I got it yeah, wrong. I, so, I left so it very apologies. ambiguous. Uh, yes. But I did that deliberately. Ah, <gasps> you sneaky scoundrel! You sneaky I know. Scoundrel. We'll rename the show the Sneaky Scoundrels. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have our title, and you go watch all the way to the end of the episode for it to make sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll leave it there. That's a good solid two hours of content. There, I don't know how anyone complained about that wow. for free. Um, right, yes, thank you for joining us on this the Charisma Vacuum Hangout. We're here every Thursday night at nine PM UK time. Come along and join us and chat, and you know uh, about whatever Spider Man or Dark or whatever it is you'd like to chat about. <laughs> Only those two. Only Maybe the, Attack on Titan. If you've seen the end of Attack on Titan, <laughs> get in touch. Ruin it for us. Let us know. Was it not worth it? <laughs> Have you played Resident Evil 4 Remake? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, yes, but we are here during those hours. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Farewell and goodbye. Goodbye. My tongue really hurts. That glass of water has really done a number on me. It feels like someone's been chewing on it. 